magnesium oxide synthesis. We're going to need three mass measurements. We're going to need the crucible and lid. When we roast the magnesium, we're going to produce magnesium oxide and that magnesium oxide is going to be light and airy and capable of going everywhere. In fact, it's going to be so light and airy that with the amount of heat that's around it, it may eject right from the, the crucible with any little crack. That means that some of it's going to get onto the lid. Now we're going to coil it up and put it inside the crucible and lid, hoping that there will be enough air around all of the different parts of magnesium that we get a nice reaction. Let's go ahead and put the lid back on and get the new mass. So right now we have two out of the three masses that we need. The big issue will be how careful we are as we do the lab where we roast and heat the magnesium. We must have oxygen. Now there's many things that can go wrong that can cause us to get a low yield. Notice I have an opening and so oxygen should be able to get in. The problem is magnesium oxide can also get out. As the heat hit the crucible, you may have noticed that some condensation appeared to evaporate and go away. While it might be minimal, remember that water is on the crucible and it's now gone. The magnesium oxide is very light and could leave the crucible. As soon as it does, if I notice this, I'm going to close the lid and turn off the heat source. I then can hope that I wait long enough for it to cool. As you'll see, I have got some definite trouble with that. Again, we've got a little bit of an issue where we need to have oxygen, fresh new oxygen to come into contact with the magnesium so that we can get magnesium oxide. If it's too hot and too much comes in, then we'll make too much magnesium oxide very quickly and it'll be so excited and, and energetic that it will also leave the crucible. We're going to go ahead and speed up a lot of these parts where I'm waiting, sometimes even when it's heating. You can see with my inspection it didn't go so well. I'm trying to tamp it down. It's not like it's going to do a whole lot of good when it's that excited but I'm hoping that any little particles can sort of be knocked down back to the bottom. I still haven't waited quite long enough. Again, part of the issue, and I've said it a few times at this point, Part of the issue is we do need oxygen to get into the vessel. You can see that there might be some unreacted ribbon. We're going to go ahead and heat it back up. And so we're going to let it breathe a little bit. At the first sign of any magnesium oxide escaping, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. Anyone that's ever lit magnesium ribbon on fire with a Bunsen burner or a heavy heat source uh, knows that it is very, very bright uh, and produces a tremendous amount of magnesium oxide very quickly. 
we're trying to do it much, much more slowly. Uh, and if too much oxygen rushes in and it's too hot, the magnesium is too hot, then what's going to happen is we're going to see that nice little fireball that you'd normally see with just burning ribbon. We're trying to avoid that. Now it's just a matter of how long and how patient I can be. Uh, clearly I'm not. And I'm going to have to assume that I'm losing uh, at least a small amount, hopefully not a significant or large amount of magnesium oxide. This is clearly going to be a source of error, the human involved, and the lack of patience on my part. Part of this is due to a high school environment where you only have a certain amount of time to do the experiment and you can only allow so much time for it to cool, reoxygenate the vessel, and then reheat it. At this point, I've waited long enough that it should be cool enough, and so we're going to go ahead and put it on the scale. The balance should be safe. This should not be too hot. It should be very close to room temperature at this point. So let's go ahead and get our final measurement, our third measurement. Once we have this, we'll have all of the data that we need for our lab write-up. We can then go on to that and calculate some additional things. Remember, this was done for our stoichiometry lessons, and so we definitely are going to have to calculate some other things.